And here you can see some punch stat numbers on their most recent fights. Whitaker is a little bit busier than Nazario. Nazario tries to aggravate you to death. And of course, Whitaker throws a lot more jabs. 41 jabs per round against Azuma Nelson. Rules for the bout, three judges scoring it. 10 point must system, no standing eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect and you can be saved by the bell in the last round. Only once again now, ring announcer Jim Hall, the pre-fight intros. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Sulema, Supervisor Haig Collegian, the World Boxing Association, President Dr. Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Julio Castillo, International Boxing Federation President Bob Lee, Supervisor Alvin Goodman, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Dwayne Ford, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Jay Nady, and Luther Mack. The executive director is Chuck Minker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Tahoe, our main event. This match scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. The referee for this contest is Mills Lane. Introducing first in the red corner, this young man is wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He weighs 135 pounds. He's from Puerto Rico with a record of 22 wins. Two losses with 16 wins by knockout. Here's the WBA lightweight champion of the world. Here's Juan Nazario. Nazario. And now, fighting out of the blue corner, this young man is wearing the black trunks with the red trim. He weighs 135 pounds. He fights out of Norfolk, Virginia, with a record of 22 wins. One loss with 12 wins by knockout. Here's the IBF and WBC. Lightweight champion of the world. Here's Pernell Sweet Second. You go here. You come here. Okay, now. We've already been through all the instructions in the dressing room, okay? Now protect yourself at all no, times. Any questions here? No, sir. Any questions here? Let's get it on. Come on. Here we go. There are a lot of little Sierra Mountain bugs flitting all over the ring as darkness descends on us. But the bug who may be hardest to hit of all is... Pernell Whitaker. In the corner, please. Kind of makes you scared to open your mouth, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Suddenly calling the fight is considerably more dangerous a task than has ever been the case before. Referee Mills Lane is supervising his 43rd professional world championship fight. One of the best. You'll see a lot of reaching by Nazario because of the hand speed and foot speed of Pernell Whitaker. Whitaker is not moving as much now. He's trying to uh, preserve that uh, strength and energy. What he's doing now is trying to pick his shots and seeing what Nazario is vulnerable to. He knows how to head feints, body feints, keeping that jab in his face. In addition to headbutts and, of course, fighting, Lou Duba also asked during the rules meeting that attention be paid to Nazario's elbows. Duba contends that Nazario has been known to crack his opponents across the chin with the elbows. That would not be the case, and I'm all, I can almost guarantee you that if Whitaker boxes, stays on the outside, keep his man's turning, and uses his hand and foot speed. He should not allow Nazario to get that close to him. Yeah, if it happens, it usually happens inside on the ropes. Over the top with the left for Whitaker and the short right inside. What great feet he has, Ray. Such balance, always moving. I like the, the way he, Whitaker attacks the body. I mean, he puts his whole body behind him. There he's giving angles. And he's making, making it very difficult for Nazario to get set. Normally when you see a southpaw in the ring, 
you watch the front feet because you expect to see the situation in which front feet be can become entangled. But here are two southpaws. It's just like two conventional fighters going against one another. That was the body shots. Beautiful execution of shots to the body by Whitaker. When you hear a guy say he's get, he gets his whole body into, the, into a punch, Whitaker does just that. Nobody knew the punch was that hard, and we'll have to take a look at the replays to determine exactly what punch that happened to. That, that caused that, that effect. Third first round knockout of Purnell's career, but as I pointed out, he never knocked out a champion fighter before. It's almost like, like a delayed opening of a parachute after a guy jumps out of a plane. And Nazario's still down. What happened? Yeah, Nazario's still down, Larry. Sorry to interrupt. Wow. It's the punch you don't see, as we've often said before, that's the one that hurts you the most. And obviously, it was a quick, sharp punch that Nazario never saw. Well, that's one sure way to make sure you're not going to get elbowed or bit or butted or kicked. Good job. Hold on, man. What I see in point of Whitaker, he's getting stronger, more confident, and the thing about it, he's going to be tough to beat. The official time of the knockout, 2 minutes 59 seconds of the first round. So Whitaker used the entire round to scope out his opponent before landing the blow that did the damage. He had scored over the top with a couple of left hands, flush on the jaw, but they didn't put Nazario down. Let's take a look at a replay and see what happened. The whole time, Brennan Whitaker had control. I mean, he worked the body of Nazario. He laid back, a lot of feints, and come with that beautiful overhand left. It was almost like a delayed reaction. It came so sharp, so quick. And here we have another angle. It was a body shot first that led up to that. And Whitaker taking his time, setting this man up, and counter with that overhand left hand. Beautiful shot. Right on the jaw. You saw Nazario drop his right hand to make it possible, too. And again, Jim, the, the devastation of that punch, you see here, once again, when he land the punch, there's like a delay, and then Nazario goes down. Whitaker got his whole body behind that punch. So now he'll get to wear three belts. And the first lightweight to do so in 12 years. Here are the quickest knockway, knockouts in the history of lightweight title defenses, and this two-minute, 59-second job is not in the same statistical league with some of the others that you're seeing here, but it makes its mark getting into the top ten quickest knockouts in lightweight title fights. And right now, let's go up and hear the official particulars from Jim Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight ends at 2.59 of the first round here at Caesars Tahoe. Winner by knockout and the undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. Whitaker. night as you look at those statistics there were 2215 punches thrown here in this HBO triple header and the most effective was the last a left hand over the top by Brunel Whitaker which has made him the undisputed lightweight champion of the world 
And right now, we go up to listen to a man who a few years back was not an easy interview with reticent, one-word answers. He's a whole different kind of guy now, and he's great fun to talk to as Larry Merchant gets the chance. Larry? Purnell, what happened? First of all, Larry, do I get the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? You get three wonderful, right. two ears, and all the hooves. <laughs> well, Larry, first, you know, what happened was I was establishing the good jab, and once I got on track with my jab, I was kind of like filling him out, but I saw his, his left hand, his right hand kept coming down. So I figured a quick one, too, would, would, uh, would, would catch him on the 10th. But, uh, you know, and that's what happened. You, it was the right hand because there was such a delayed right reaction. It seemed like a punch he didn't really see. He didn't see it because, you know, I, I worked hard and uh, I worked on that, blinding him with the jab, blinding him with the jab and all. And uh, it was wonderful. I, I can't believe it. Now, you don't look big enough to wear three belts. <laughs> How do you feel do. about having three belts? Uh, it's wonderful. And first of all, without the help of my, my family back home, uh, Vaughn, Dominic, and Purnell, I, they believed in me. And uh, they told me to wash the head, butts, and elbows. Daddy did it. And second of all, I'd like to say hello to everybody back home. We did it. Happy birthday, little Floyd. And happy 20 plus. Well, we want you to enjoy this, and obviously you will. But let me ask you this. What is in store now for Pernell Whitaker? Everybody talks about uh, Taylor fighting Chavez and, and Camacho fighting Chavez, big, big money fights. Why don't you get in on that? Where is the big money fight for you? Of course, the biggest challenge for me right now is the Super Bowl Little Basketball game I have August 29th. I want him to know, just like I hit with that right hand, that's how good my basketball game is. But no, I want... I want to, uh, I want to, I want to say that you know I'm the I'm the type of fighter that hasn't chased anyone. I fought the best. Now it's time for the best to start. Wanting to fight Pernell Whitaker. Yes, right. we want Chavez, but that's all right. Chavez is the fight. Camacho, uh, you got, uh, you got all sorts of champions up there. I mean, I speculated that you and Chavez and Taylor, and Camacho could be to the 90s, what Ray Leonard and Hagler and Hearns and Duran were the 80s, so I, I, I want to see you in on it, but you don't seem as eager to be in on it as well, I do. Well, you know, I let things come to me, uh, Larry. You know, just like all good things come to those who wait, I let it come to me, and uh, people, everybody across the country have seen it, seen what happened tonight. Now they just let the people decide who they want to see fight between Pernell Whitaker or who. And, you know, I plug Sugar Ray Leonard, back, the basketball game with Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm very serious about it. People are home waiting for that to happen. I'll be home. All right. Okay. okay, before we get to your jump shot, we'll go over quickly. What is next for Purnell Whitaker? Well, I think, Larry, he fits in. He can go either way. He can go to 40. He can stay at 35. I would like to give the winner of uh, Tony Lopez and Orge Paez a shot at his lightweight title. I would like to step up and fight uh, Ch Chavez. We'll fight for 40 pounds. We'll fight anybody at all. He's, he's flexible around there. We can go either way. We're ready to fight a top fight for HB. Right after, after a knockout like this, I guess you feel you can take on the world. <laughs> I, right now, uh, I feel good about it. I, I still don't believe it. I want my, my family to know I'll be home. We're going to Washington, D.C. to the zoo. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Purnell. Now back to ringside. Well, you heard about the basketball game, and it's a mark of Purnell's confidence that during our brief meeting with him yesterday, he talked very little about boxing and a great deal about his basketball challenge <laughs> against you, Ray Leonard. But we look ahead for what's up for Purnell Whitaker. He listed a lot of possible opponents. None of them were 135-pound fighters. He talked about Camacho and Chavez. It's an irony of this kind of success that he may already have cleaned out the lightweight division in terms of big money fights. Can he go up to 140? He can fight at 140, 147. I think with his speed, with his talent, with his God-given hand speed, he can deal with anyone. I was very impressed when he annihilated Juan Rosario, Nazario. I mean, he, it was a perfect display of power. One round knockout in the eyes of many doesn't prove much, but he looks to be so much better than was the case just a short time ago at, as you say, getting his whole body into the punches. Well, if you notice, he settled down. It wasn't a movement. He wasn't running around the place, taking his time, picking his shots, Worked the jab, worked the body, and then that blazing left hand came into play. 